Coming up on the Q30 newscast, SGA reaches out to the student body, see what it's doing to make students' lives easier. And it was a big week for charity, fraternities, and sororities hosting events, raising money for good causes. All that and more coming up on the Q30 newscast. Welcome to the Q30 Newscast. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kirby Paulson. And I'm Andrew Badillo. Student Government, Asso Student Government Association recently sent out a survey regarding the parking situation at Quinnipiac. Kerry Golden has the details. Parking has become a hot topic on campus. If it's not the commuter lots being full, it's the recent changes to the CCE parking lot. This past Tuesday, SGA sent out a Tuesday 2 on the parking problem. We've been devising a plan, like, how to go about it, but mainly we wanted student feedback. So, so far, uh, as of last night, we were at 1,600 responses, so that's awesome. Um, so the more we get and the more people who take the survey, it helps. On top of getting students' opinion, the Student Government Association has been compiling data on the number of spots in each parking lot and the number of sophomores living on campus all in preparation for an upcoming meeting with Provost Mark Thompson and Vice President of Facilities and Capital Planning, Sal Velarde. We want to prove to them that this is a major issue, so we, we need more and more students to tell us why it's an issue. So far, around 1,600 students have taken the survey, each sharing their experiences with the full parking lots and how it is affecting their education. I mean, it's a, become a pretty frequent thing where Kids will pull up and see people walking and ask them if they want to ride to their car just so they can get a guaranteed spot. This is the only commuter lot that I know of and it's always full and I'm always kind of making my own parking spaces it seems like. While the Tuesday 2's provide an opportunity for students to vent their parking frustrations, some are hopeful that they will actually see some results. I feel like I usually don't see any sort of improvement when I take Tuesday's 2's so I'm really hoping this time I'll see them some improvement. I think that it just shows that they're really considering our voices as commuter students, and so I hope that they, you know, go forward with their initiative. While extending parking lots or building a garage are long-term goals, Mullaney and Senior Representative Sarah Schreiner are working together to find short-term solutions for students. At South Lot for Q30 News, Cali Keys. Sticking with SGA, Anna Sackle has an update on its weekly meeting from earlier today. Anna? Hey guys, I'm upstairs in the Student Center in front of the room where SJG board was held today. A lot was talked about in the meeting. I'm just going to touch upon a few things. The first thing is the That's Not OK campaign, which is being launched on March 21st. What the campaign is basically just to get students talking around campus about different campus culture issues like race and gender. There's going to be speakers coming. There's going to be a ton of events going on during the day. There's going to be a lot more information coming up, so stay tuned. We, Q30 will have all the information for you on that when it comes. Another thing, this is new, Lead the Future campaign is a campaign being spearheaded by the class of 2020. And all it is is a Facebook page, kind of similar to Humans of New York, if you've ever heard of it. It's basically just to spotlight different freshmen and all the great things they're doing around campus, at home, any charity work they're doing. It's just a really great way to get people doing good things and learning about the things that your fellow peers are doing. And it should be great. Check it out, Lead the Future campaign. It's on Facebook. Also, Tuesday twos, those emails that you get every Tuesday from SGA, the results are in from last week. The first question, how is SGA representing students? It was a tie with 34% saying that they are representing us well and 34% saying they're rep representing us moderately well. The second question, how responsive is administration? They didn't do so good. 35% of them said they were doing moderately well and 31% said they were only slightly representing us. That's all I have. There's a lot more. If you want to know more, I have a full report for you up on the website at q30television.com. That's all I have right now. I'm Anna Sackle. Now back to you guys. Governor Malloy makes a decision in favor of immigrants, and President Trump addresses the nation for the first time since his inauguration. Alicia, Alicia Leo has this week's pol political news. Thanks, guys. 
The governor of Connecticut, Daniel Malloy, sent a memo last Wednesday to officials across the state telling them to ignore the federal immigration law made by President Trump. Part of the memo said that police could not detain anyone due to their immigration status. The Connecticut state government passed the Trust Act in 2013, which supported a Connecticut as a sanctuary state. The memo was sent out as the backup to this Trust Act and comes after President Trump's controversial travel ban. In more Trump news, the president delivered his first address to Congress on Tuesday night. In his speech, he focused on hot topics like immigration, saying that he believes, quote, that a real and positive immigration reform is possible as long as we focus on the following goals. To improve jobs and wages for Americans, to strengthen our nation's security, and to restore respect for our laws, end quote. Trump said he wants to focus on benefiting the American citizens by fixing the immigration system. He still plans on building the wall between the U.S. and Mexico and plans to increase the national security budget by 10%. The final budget will be presented to Congress on March 16th and will be finished by the beginning of May. That's all I have for your political update. I'm Alicia Leo. Kirby, Andrew, back to you. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah, Donald Trump definitely making waves in his first few months of his presidency. Certainly, Kirby. Well, let's take a look at the QThon donation leaderboard. Management team member Devin Kelly is in the lead with just over $3,000. Qthon operations team member Rob Cohen is in second at just under $2,000. Followed by, followed by Alana Calvano of the Dancer Relations Committee. In fourth and fifth place are John Kaczynski and Alex Larson, respectively. And let's take a look now at the organizational leaders for the Qthon budget teams. We got Gamma Phi Beta. Alpha Chi Omega, Phi Sigma Sigma, QSNA, and rounding out at number five, we have Chi Omega at just over $2,000. Qthon is going to kick off on Saturday, March 25th, but again, throughout today, and in an effort to spread awareness for Qthon, which is again happening later this month, there were fundraising efforts, tabling, and a photo opportunity. Q30 News caught up with Qthon sponsorship co-chair Andrew Stengel to learn more. We are doing our 30K in a day push day uh, where we're looking to raise $30,000 in one day for the children, patients, families of Connecticut Children's Medical Center by doing all sorts of different fundraising activities. Uh, behind us we have some tabling going on for people to take pictures and kind of promote awareness for the event and for the, uh, the bigger event of Qthon coming up at the end of March. The Quinnipiac chapter of Best Buddies held its annual Spread the Word to End the World event earlier today in the Piazza. The goal of the event is to raise awareness for the mentally disabled and replace the word retarded with respect. Many students, along with their buddies, took to the stage to dance and sing and talk about how Best Buddies has helped them. More than 200 people attended the event, and while it is meant to spread awareness, not raise money, Best Buddies still raised close to $100 for the organization. School Communications Dean Lee Camlet provided Q30 News with updates about SOC construction. The plan is to move all Ed McMahon facilities, which are located in the School of Business in CCE. This, this is scheduled to take place this summer into the beginning of 2018. Although Kamala is retiring in the summer, he has approved $150,000 worth of equipment, both for the studio and for students to use, to use, quote, maintain our excellent facilities, end quote. During the Quinnipiac Yale hockey matchup last Friday, students were also treated to the reveal of the headliner for the Student Program Programming Board Spring Concert known as Wake the Giant. EDM artist Tiesto will perform for the undergraduate student body on April 21st at the TD Bank Sports Center. He is known for songs like Red Lights and A Town Called Paradise. Tickets will go on sale to the Quinnipiac community Sunday, March 5th at approximately 10 p.m. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Quinnipiac Greek Life held charity events this week. See which fraternity raised almost double its goal. And tornadoes in Massachusetts, Kirby? Well, Josh Silverman stops by with this week's national news. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All this and more. Coming up on the Q30 Newscast. Hello, Quinnipiac hockey fans, and welcome to the Neutral Zone. Definitely St. Lawrence, and I think you're going to see the test coming up real soon. They might be having a bit of an adjustment issue without that CBS line, but don't count them out. At High Point Solutions Arena, at in Game 2 of Quinnipiac vs. Northeastern Series. It's 9.30 Eastern, and you know what that means. Sports Pause is on the air. We'll have ball played up the middle. Come on, Will, with a little cheat off the pipe. Preseason just boils down to going after another national championship and not necessarily focusing on the, on the one before. And Jane, it's time for our favorite part of the show. It's the top five plays of the week brought to you by B&B Deli, home of the two dogs. Let's, let's talk about the first play you want to break down. Yeah, let's break it down right away. But the one name I'm going to throw out there is a freshman, Mika Maples. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. Thanks for sticking with us. Hamden Citizen of the Year is WQUN, the AM channel of Quinnipiac University General Manager Ray Anderson. Mike Iozzo met up with Anderson and spoke about the award in his 20 years at the radio station. Ray Anderson, WQUN's General Manager, has been awarded Hamden Citizen of the Year Award this past weekend. We asked him how he felt about receiving this prestigious award. It really does mean a lot, and I mean that it, sincerely and genuinely. Uh, I think anybody who's acknowledged for something they value would say the same thing. These are my values, and it's very rewarding. It really is. Um, I love what I do, and I also love what I do outside of my job. And I think when you're engaged, you don't feel lonely. Ray has been both the general manager of WQUN for 13 years and volunteering in the greater Hamden area for over 20 years, saying that this job as a disc jockey has fueled his passion for volunteering. Well, I operate a community radio station, so we actually service over 400 organizations, 400 in the greater New Haven area, uh, from the smallest to the largest, and we promote their events, their concerts, lectures. Um, nonprofit organizations, uh, everything from blood drives to the American Red Cross to the libraries. I think through volunteering you derive strength, you derive purpose, and you find that community and you find friendships that last a lifetime. We had the opportunity to talk to Ray's coworker, Maria Phillips, about his character and commitment to serving the Hamden area. Ray is, is a stand-up type of guy. He is honest, he is trustworthy. He is an excellent manager and it's an amazing accomplishment to become Citizen of the Year for North Haven and Hamden. It's well deserving as well. He's been serving our community, Hamden and North Haven communities, for 20 years here on WQUN. Ray Andrewson has done a ton to serve both the Quinnipiac community and the Hamden community. And cock a doodle doo to you too. Welcome, you made it. It is a Wednesday, March 1st, 2017. Welcome to the WQN Morning Show. I'm Ray Andrewson. I'm Mike Iozza reporting for Q30 News. Quinnipiac is urging its students to be careful tonight after a series of scam attempts. The university sent out a message on MyQ urging students to be on the lookout for callers posing as Microsoft or Apple support. The callers have been asking for credit card numbers. Chief Information Officer Brian Kelly tells students to hang up immediately and notify information services. Anybody could be a victim. So we, we kind of thought it was important to get the message out of MyQ uh, to the Quinnipiac community to say, you know, just be on the lookout. If you get these weird calls that say they're from, you know, Apple or, or Microsoft and it's tech support, you know, be suspicious, hang up. You know, those companies aren't going to call you. They're not, they're not that good. They're not going to call and say, hey, we've detected that stuff. 
Kirby, there were reports of tornadoes in Massachusetts. That's your neck of the woods. Well, that's just wild. But also in my neck of the woods, a Boston firefighter saves a four-legged friend from imminent danger. Josh Silverman has this week's national update. Thanks, guys. In a heroic event, a Boston firefighter saved the life of a dog that fell into an iced over pond on Thursday. The dog had walked out onto the pond and fallen in. The dog's owner was shouting for the dog to come back, but it was already too late. That is when the hero emerged. An unnamed firefighter in a survival suit broke the ice around the dog and carried her to safety. This wonderful story was captured by a bystander, Emily Andrea Robinson, on her phone. Now, do you have over $100 million to spare and an urge to go to the moon? If so, you're in luck. SpaceX has announced that it will be sending two citizens to orbit the moon in 2018. What is the reason driving these two people, who are currently anonymous, that might go to the moon? Is it bragging rights? Are they doing it for the gram? Or maybe it's just a lifelong dream. Whatever their reason is, this couple will be getting the trip of a lifetime. Finally, tonight, a tornado touched down in western Massachusetts this past weekend, the National Weather Service confirmed. Ashfield, Chest Chesterfield, Conway, and, and Chesterfield were among the towns hurt by the tornado. Wind gusts reached up to 100 miles per hour, and it only took between two and seven minutes for, for the tornado to, quote, touch down with a vengeance in Conway, according to meteorologists. The tornado's five-mile path had destroyed at least a dozen houses and a 300-year-old barn, meteorologists say. This is the first recorded tornado in the month of February since they started keeping official statistics in 1950. The tornado left 78% of Eversource customers in Conway without power, however power was fully restored by Monday morning. That's all your national news for this week. I'm Josh Servin. Back to Andrew and Kirby at the desk. The Quinnipiac University Irish Club wants you to come out to its St. Baldrick's fundraiser called Potato Palooza. A $5 all-you-can-eat potato bar will be set up in the CAF in order to raise money. The event takes place March 5th, March 5th from 5 to 8. All proceeds will go towards St. Baldrick's and its effort to find a cure for children with cancer. Everything from Potato Palooza goes to St. Baldrick's, which is an organization that funds cancer research for children. So um, we're kind of all about just making money for that. And then um, we're going to have St. Baldrick's next week, where people come out and shave their head in solidarity of kids with cancer to show their support for them. Sigma Phi Epsilon rounded out the big week it was in Quinnipiac Charity Tuesday night with their event, Battling with Brandon. SIGEP hosted a soccer tournament in order to raise money for Brandon, Ro for Brandon Rojas, a nine-year-old diagnosed with a rare brain disorder. The six-on-six -six tournament cost $3 per participant. Fans were charged the same. With the semester barreling towards the halfway point, students and faculty advisors will begin meeting to plan out the next few months ahead regarding the fall and summer 2017 semester. This year's registration has changed. Rather than every student getting an allotted time and date to register, each class will be registering at the same date and same time frame. An announcement from the registrar sent out today advised students to plan early in the student planning section of self-service, as the earlier you can plan, the easier that they said registration will be. Registration will begin on March 27th for seniors and other years will follow. Freezing for a reason. That was Delta Tau Delta's motto for its charity pol polar plunge this past Saturday in Middletown. The fraternity raised just over $7,000 for Special Olympics Connecticut, smashing its goal of $4,000. Special Olympics Connecticut gives over 13,000 athletes the opportunity to play in Olympic Games. And Burt Concord got loud Sunday as members of, the, of Quinnipiac's Greek Life community got together to participate in Kappa Delta's annual Shamrock the Rope event. The tug-of-war competition is held to raise money for KD's national charity, Prevent Child Abuse America. New Blue Rugby took home the title, but organizations say every participant was a winner. Quinnipiac Dining Services is offering cash in exchange for talent this month as it continues its Quinnipiac's Got Talent series. The event, taking place in the lower calf across from Arlon Pond, allows students to showcase their skills in front of members of the Quinnipiac community. Solo artists are being offered $25 an hour, while those performing in groups of two or more can earn $75 an hour. Quinnipiac Scott Talent will continue to run this month with a sign-up sheet for the rest of March expected soon. J. Crew applications are now available. Every year, Campus Life selects a group of juniors to help monitor seniors during Senior Week. Last year was the first year Senior Week eclipsed 1,000 seniors. Applications are due via email by March 5th at 5 p.m. When we come back, Krista Delane stops by to discuss the latest in the entertainment world. 
And Carrie Golden gives us her full weather forecast. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up on hashtag that. We are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. Hello, Quinnipiac hockey fans, and welcome to the Neutral Zone. Definitely St. Lawrence, and I think you're going to see the test coming up real soon. It might be having a bit of an adjustment issue without that CBS line, but don't count them out. At High Point Solutions Arena, at, in Game 2 of Quinnipiac vs. Northeastern Series, On Bobcat Breakdown. Coming up on Bobcat Breakdown. And welcome into Studio 125. So what? So what? If you score 40 points in a basketball game, we all know you play Quinnipiac and Rails. We all this, know you love to shoot the rock. Isn't well, if, if you think that's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, what am I? What I'm about to say, I guess, is going to be pretty ridiculous in your book. But I'm going to say yes, there is a controversy. I'm line, getting ready to punch the ball as it lands right in front of another Monmouth player. Welcome back to the Q30 newscast, Kirby. I left my shorts at home. I should have brought them back when I went when I went home a couple weekends ago. I wore mine the other day, buddy. Crazy temperatures. Kerry Golden is standing by with their full weather forecast. All right, thanks, guys. Look, I'm out on the quad, and it's a great night out here. 37 degrees, clear, late night fog, but that's okay. Winds in the north direction at one mile an hour, not bad at all. And sunset was at 534 today, if you're keeping track of that, to see when and how late it's getting towards uh, the summertime. Looking at tonight's temperatures in the towns surrounding us, in Stores, Hartford, and Waterbury, it's 46 degrees, not too bad. In Meriden and Norwich, it's 45. In New Haven, 47. And in New London, 43. So no matter where you go, if you go off campus, if you go to a Target or something like that, it's still a pretty warm night no matter where you go. Let's look ahead into tomorrow. It's going to be 60 degrees. Great day tomorrow to sit out on the quad, hike the giant. Wind in the southwest direction at 6 miles an hour. And sunrise will be at 6.36 a.m. So if you're one of those people that like to get out early and get a run in or you like to watch the sun come up, it will be at 6.36 a.m. All right. So tomorrow night's forecast will be 45 degrees. So warmer than tonight if you have a late night meeting. Great night to walk back. Wind in the northwest direction at 4 miles an hour, and sunset will be at 5.35 p.m. All right, now the moment you've been waiting for, the full weather forecast for next week. Like we said, Thursday will be 60 degrees, low of 45, partly cloudy. However, Friday will be a little bit rainy, but not to worry. High of 58 with a low of 46, so still a relatively warm day. Saturday it will be a little bit cloudy. High of 59, low of 39, still not too bad. And then have no fear, the sun will come back out on Sunday with a high of 46, low of 28. And then Monday and Tuesday look like it's going to be partly cloudy. High of 46 on Monday, low of 29. On Tuesday, it'll be a high of 43, low of 37. And then rounding up the end of the week back to Wednesday, it'll be cloudy with a high of 54 and a low of 36. So not too bad of a week looking ahead. It's been pretty warm, and it looks like spring is just around the corner. I'm Kerry Gold, and that's all I have for your full weather forecast. Back to Kirby and Andrew at the desk. Thanks, guys. I mean, Andrew, Kerry, I'm so disappointed. I thought it was going to snow on Friday. I'm a big fan of colder weather, both the song and the temperature. I might as well go home. There was a high of 70 today, Kirby. Oh, what are you going to do? 
Well, the Oscars were a hot topic this weekend from the Casey Affleck fiasco to Moonlight winning Best Picture. Krista Delane catches you all up in this week's entertainment report. The 89th Oscars, hosted by Jimmy Kimmel, had its share of drama this past Sunday. There were performances by Justin Timberlake, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Sting, and John Legend. Meryl Streep was up for her 20th Oscar nomination, which is a record for the Academy Awards. Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty, stars of the famous Bonnie and Clyde film, were the presenters for the Best Motion Picture. They announced that the winner was La La Land, but as the cast and crew walked on stage to give their acceptance speeches, it turned out that the envelope given to the presenters was a copy of Best Actress in a Leading Role. That award had gone to Emma Stone for her lead role in La La Land. The real winner for Best Motion Picture went to another film, Moonlight. Jimmy Kimmel attempted to lighten the situation by taking stage and said that he personally blamed Steve Harvey for this, joking about Harvey's Miss Universe mix-up. Amazon won its first ever Academy Award, taking home three awards on Sunday night. In the end, the 89th Oscars were a success. Actor Bill Paxton passed away suddenly this Saturday. He was famous for his roles in Titanic, The Terminator, Aliens, Big Love, and his leading role in Twister. Paxton's death was due to complications after recent heart surgery. He will be missed by many. Sorry, Gossip Girl fans, but if any of you were hoping to one day be actor Penn Bagley's Serena, you missed your chance. Bagley, well known for his role as Dan Humphrey in the Gossip Girl series, is officially off the market. He got married to his girlfriend of three years, Domino Kirk, in a Brooklyn courthouse on Monday. Congratulations to the happy couple. That's all I have for your entertainment news. I'm Krista Delane. Back to you guys at the desk. All right, thanks a lot, Krista. We're going to actually take our final break, but when we come back, Chris Stacy stops by with sports. We'll be right back. Coming up on the Q30 Newscast. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. Chris Stacy is standing by with sports. Hey, Chris, I heard there was a pretty big hockey game this past weekend. Thanks, guys. Right you are, Andrew. It was a busy week in sports, and in case you haven't heard, it was Yale week. Let's see how the game went. Let's roll the highlight. Like I said, Yale hockey, it was the 15th Heroes Hat game between QU and Yale. We're going to see what happened. And there is President John Leahy. We're going to see what he said before the game on, corner, on Bobcat game day. wanted to tell the team for the game. Beat Yale. Pretty <laughs> simple, right? As you can see, he's excited. This crowd's excited, so let's go right into some action right here in the first period. We're going to see number 12, Thomas Aldworth for QU here. He's going to skate right in. He's going to get denied right here, but Bo Peeper is there to clean his mess up. They are going, Bobcats go up 1-0. They say everyone's excited here. And you see Connor Clifton here, or Tim Clifton, excuse me. He's going to get into a bit of a uh, fight there. You can see the Yale rivalry. Still alive and well. And we're going to see another goal here by Landon Smith. Takes him two times, but he's going to get it in. Quinnipiac's up 3-0 at the end of the first period. We're going to move right on to the second period. Yale, 21 seconds in. They're going to get one right past, your, uh, right past Shortridge here. Score goes to 3-1. to one. Yale will eventually make it 3-2 to two here. And we're going to see Yale. I mean, Quinnipiac sloppy with the puck here. Yale's going to get a great chance, but Andrew Shortridge was a brick wall in the net. He had 19 saves. 
in his first Yale QU game. Yale's going to win this one, 3-2. to two. Yale has still not beat QU since 2013. All right, now we're going to stay on the ice to talk some women's hockey. The Bobcats traveled down to Princeton, New Jersey for the first round of the ECAC playoffs. Quinnipiac fell two games to one against Princeton in, three ga in the three-game series. The first game took three overtimes to decide a winner. It was Kate McKenzie who netted the, first, the final goal for the Bobcats. After that, it was all Princeton Tigers. They won the next two games by scores of 2-0 to zero and 2-1. Two to one. The women's ice hockey team finished the season with a record of 21, 10, and 6. Let's transition on to the hardwood and talk some basketball. The men's and women's team had their senior days this past weekend. The women's team beat Canisius on Saturday, 62 to 48. It was Adelie Martucci, Morgan Manns, and Brianna Ramos' last game on Lender Court. With the win, the women's team clinched the MAC regular season championship. As for the men's team, its weekend went a little bit differently. We t they had a senior day celebration. It was cut short because the Bobcats could not get it done against Ryder. They fell 99-82. to Both teams will be playing this weekend up in Albany for the MAC tournament. And the men's team will be playing Niagara tomorrow. The women's team will have to wait until Saturday. Between They'll see who they're going to play, either Canisius or Niagara, on Saturday. That's all the sports I got for you guys. Andrew, Kirby, back to you guys on the desk. Thank you, Chris. That's all we have for you tonight. Thank you for joining us. So remain up to date on the latest Quinnipiac news, follow us at Q30 News on Twitter and visit us at Q30Television.com. For Andrew Badillo, I'm Kirby Paulson. We bid you good night and farewell on this Wednesday evening. Have a good week.